Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Weapons Wednesday. I'm Jonathan Bernstein, the museum's arms and armor curator. Today we're going to discuss a fascinating subject. Which was a better weapon for World War II Marine Corps fighter planes, the 50 caliber machine gun or the 20 millimeter cannon? This subject first came up several weeks ago when I was researching Medal of Honor recipient James Sweat and the Type 38 rifle that he brought home uh, that we highlighted on the show. Uh, as I was researching him, I came across the combat report for his 15th and last kill scored on 11 May 1945 off of Okinawa. We know Sweat was flying a cannon-armed F4U-1C that day because the report specifically states that his 20 millimeters tore through the enemy airplane. Uh, all of Sweat's earlier kills had been scored in either the F4F Wildcat or F4U-1 armed with 50 caliber guns. Uh, while the Army Air Force had a few aircraft types like the P-38 and P-61 that used the ANM-220 millimeter, the Navy and the Marines had stuck with the 50 cal uh, until jamming issues with the 20 millimeter had been worked out. Uh, so which was a better weapon? The 50 caliber ANM-2 uh, machine gun, which had equipped Navy and Marine Corps uh, fighters throughout the entire war and scored 99% of the American air-to-air -air kills, or the ANM-2 20 millimeter just entering service on the F-41C in April 1945. We're going to look at the numbers and see what we can figure out. So we'll be comparing five different criteria, muzzle velocity and single round impact, rate of fire, target effect, ammunition capacity, and mission. These should give us a relatively clear picture of how each weapon performed in its intended role. We're going to look at the F4U Corsair as our primary example uh, as the airframe carried both weapons during the war. The F4U-1, 1A, and 1D all carried 50s, while the F4U-1C carried 420s. First, let's look at the, the weapons themselves. We have the ANM-2 50 caliber machine gun here in front. This is what armed Marine and Navy fighters throughout the war. Usually a battery of six guns was carried, all collimated to converge at a point the size of a dinner plate, roughly 1,000 feet in front of the airplane. The gun itself weighs about 70 pounds. Next, we have the Hispano Suiza HS404 20mm gun. This gun was used by all of the major allies during World War II and was standardized by the US military as the ANM2 20mm. Like the 50s, four 20mm were collimated to converge to a single point in front of the airplane. And the 20mm weighs about 110 pounds. So, our first criteria is muzzle velocity and weight of impact of a single round. That's how fast the projectile is moving as it leaves the, uh, the muzzle of the weapon and how it impacts. Uh, when it hits. We'll compare the M8 armor-piercing incendiary 50 caliber round to the Mark I high explosive 20 millimeter round. The M8 API round flies at about 883 meters per second and weighs 40 grams, which translates to 31,000 newtons of kinetic force on impact. The Mark I high explosive 20 millimeter flies at roughly 792 and a half meters per second, but weighs 130 grams, imparting 81,000 newtons on impact. And this is before taking explosive effect of the 20 millimeter round into account. The 20 millimeter is just a tad slower, but hits with nearly three times the force. Advantage, 20 millimeter. Next, let's look at a rate, at rate of fire. The 50 cal has a slight edge here, firing 750 to 850 rounds per minute per gun, compared to the 600 to 750 rounds per minute for the 20 millimeter. Slight advantage, 50 caliber. But things get interesting when we start looking at weight of fire and target effect. A one second burst from 650s puts 85 rounds downrange, where the same burst from 420s puts 40 rounds downrange. So we're multiplying the kinetic impact of one round by 85 and 40, thereby imparting 2.65 million and 3.26 million newtons of force on a target respectively. Again, this is without taking the 20 millimeters explosive effect into account. Once the explosive capability is factored in, it's no contest, advantage 20 millimeter. So this brings us to the next question. How long can a pilot sustain that rate of fire? Ammunition capacity is critical in a fighter being able to perform its mission. The F4U-1D carried 2,300 rounds of ammunition for its 650s, 400 rounds each for its two inboard guns, and 375 each for the four outboard guns. That gives pilots roughly 27 one-second bursts before they're out of ammo. 2,300 rounds of ammunition weighs roughly 1,300 pounds, so there's a fair amount of weight that goes along with that much ammo. The F4U-1C, armed with four 20mm cannons, carries 480 rounds, or 120 rounds per gun. That would give pilots 12 one-second bursts before exhausting their ammunition. But 480 rounds only weighs about 500 pounds, so giving, that gives the Corsair marginally better maneuverability, speed, and range. Advantage 50 caliber, 
but only slightly. Trade-offs. Lastly, we look at mission, whether air-to-air -air or air-to-ground. Now, the previous criteria show a pretty clear advantage to the 20 millimeter in the air-to-air -air role. The destructive force of 420 millimeters against lightly armored Japanese airplanes was devastating, and the explosive power of just a few 20 millimeter hits would shred airframe structures very quickly. But while the 20 millimeter would be the preferred weapon against air-to-air -air targets, I will say that the additional ammunition of 50 calibers would really give a pilot significantly more ability to hit uh, targets on the ground. More than twice the actual firing time, coupled with the incendiary effects of the M8 armor-piercing incendiary round, gives an air-to-ground pilot significantly more capability to handle targets on the ground than the 20 millimeters. Uh, looking at these five criteria, the 20 millimeter has clear advantages in two and a half of them, while the 50 cal's advantage, advantages in two of the other categories are only marginal. The final category show, shows why foreign militaries went to a mix of machine gun and cannon on their fighters during World War II. But by 1945, the Navy, Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics standardized on the 20 millimeter ANM-3 gun, which was lighter weight and faster firing than the wartime ANM-2. All of the new designs coming out at that point, like the F7F Tiger Cat and F8F Bearcat, were designed from the outset carrying four M3 20 millimeters. In Korea, machine gun armed F4U4 Corsairs continued on as fighter bombers in both Navy and Marine Corps service, uh, but they did so alongside uh, post-war produced F4U4B, F4U5, and AU1 cannon armed Corsairs. Uh, but by that point, the days of the machine gun armed fighters in the Navy and Marine Corps had given way to cannons. For more information on the arms and armor collection and the fascinating artifacts at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, please check out our website and social media pages.